Hi students, I am Dr. Sanjay Agrawal. So the D-Day has finally come and your CBSC 12th class maths paper is around the corner. That day can prove to be life changing. Proper planning and strategy is needed along with a positive mindset so as to be able to perform diligently so that your efforts and hard work can be materialized into marks which are really really important. You cannot just afford to miss marks. You have to impress the examiner that day. Every single mark is to be saved. You may be very well prepared, but no planning or a poor planning can prove to be disastrous. Just a few days left and every day is important. Don't lose heart. Don't feel tired. No frustrations. No anxiety. Don't waste time by overthinking. Just be focused. You have to kill it man. Come on guys, you have to make it happen. Trust me, you can do this. That should be your day. Show to the world that maths is a cakewalk for you. If you are fed up of maths, leave doing it if you so wish but only after blasting it on the day of exam. I know you can do this and let me tell you how you can do this. Let's plan a bit now to make an optimal use of the days left before the actual examination. You should be aware of the most important topics, the marks allocated to different topics weightage wise, the topics which you can afford to skip and the topics which are must do. Also important is to know how to write your answers as each and every step carries marks. That is, you should know when the reference of a standard result or theorem is to be made and when it can be skipped. What should be the appropriate length of answers in different sections? Answers should not be unnecessarily long or unduly short. You need to know how to present your answers in the best ways so as to be able to fetch some extra marks due to your impressive presentation of the answer. Will a dirty and congested answer format will deprive you of some marks? Where the rough work is to be done and all other things which you should know to know you, to impress your examiner besides your subject knowledge. In a way, you also need to know how you can communicate your maths knowledge gathered over the years to the right person at the right time so as to get the full advantage and by God's grace, the perfect marks. Along with all this, it is also important to know the pattern of the actual exam paper this year. Will it be the same as the sample paper as provided by the CBSC? Or will it be different? So to reach an appropriate conclusion, I have used CBSC sample papers of 2017 and 2018 and the actual papers of 2017 and 2018 to draw a comparison about what was in the sample paper and what was actually being asked. On the basis of that and this CBSC sample paper 2019, I have tried to get a credible insight into what is expected to be asked this year. So let's have a discussion about it. You can see an exam pattern chart here. With the help of this chart, let us now see what we may expect this year. I hope you are all aware of the fact that there would be four sections, namely A, B, C and D. Section A will be having one markers, B will be having two markers, C will be having four markers and D will be having six markers. In this chart, we have outlined various topics with their respective weightages and types of questions which are expected to be asked from each of these topics. When we consider 2017 and 2018 CBSC sample papers and compare them with the actual CBSC papers of the respective years, we found that the pattern was almost the same with some variation but the topic wise weightage was more or less the same. Keeping that in mind, we analyzed the CBSC sample paper for 2018-19, that is the current year, and developed a blueprint to design our model papers or sample papers which will be provided along with the well-crafted solutions based on CBSE marking scheme as the PDF links in the descriptions given below the various videos spread over the next few days. You should ideally attempt at least two model papers each day. The papers are so modeled that you would be able to revise all the important topics thoroughly with the help of these. As per our analysis, there will be four one markers, eight two markers, 11 four markers and six six markers. The one markers will be having one internal choice, two markers will be having three internal choices, four markers will be having three internal choices and six markers will be having three internal choices. In 2017 and 18 well, there were no internal choices in one markers and two markers but this year you are going to have that advantage so you can make use of that. Four markers have highest weighting, four markers have 
highest weightage totaling to 44 marks. Then comes 6 markers totaling to 36 marks. Followed by 2 markers amounting to 16 marks. And 1 markers just contributing 4 marks. So 4 markers and 6 markers amount for 80% of the paper and hence should get your highest attention. So these 17 questions can get you 80% of the marks whereas remaining 12 questions of section A and section B get you only 20% of the marks. Although every single question is important but we are trying here to decide about which se section is to be given more weightage while revising the things. Topic wise this section on calculus is the most important with 44% weightage. This calculus is the chapters 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9 of the NCRT books. Then comes vectors and three dimensional geometry chapters 10th and 11th with 17% weightage. Third in the row is matrices and determinants chapter 3 and 4 with 13% weightage. Followed by relations and functions and inverse trigonometrical functions which you can find in chapter 1 and 2 of the NCRT book. And the probability chapter 13 of the NCRT book each with a weightage of 10% marks. Each with a weightage of 10% marks. Last is linear programming chapter 12 of the NCRT book with just 6% weightage. Most of the times from linear programming they ask a 6 marker question normally dealing with the formulation and the graphical solution. Normally there are two 6 markers from calculus. In 2017 there were three one of which is always from the integration portion one of which is always from the integration portion or the area under the curve other is most likely from the differential equation or from the maximum minimum so I repeat this there are normally two six markers from calculus one of which is always from the integration portion whether it may be indefinite integration or definite integration or the area under the curve or likelihood is that it may be from the area under the curve. The other is most likely from the differential equations or the maximum portions. In all these years, one six marker has been from the three dimensional geometry. This three dimensional geometry. One six marker has to be from matrices and determinants. One of these. It may be from matrices or it may be from determinants. One six marker is expected from linear programming as said earlier and one from relation functions etc. Maybe relation functions, maybe inverse trigonometrical functions. Six markers in linear programming involves formulations and solution. They can change it to a four marker by removing either formulation or solution. But in any case LP is an expected topic and hence must be done. Looking at its low weightage, many students skip this section so as to invest the time saved in other sections with higher weightage and importance. Just to help the, all those, my next video will be dealing with all you will need in linear programming for exams and that too is spending least possible time. Just watch that video and forget worrying about linear programming. The discussion about other sections namely A, B and C will be in my subsequent videos along with some more model papers. So students with this today's discussion comes to an end. We have discussed the important topics from which six markers are expected along with the illustrations. We also discussed the overall pattern which is expected this year. All these discussions were based on our analysis of the CBSE sample papers and the previous year papers and has been done solely with a motive to help you students. I hope you would be benefited by this and would be able to score exceedingly well in this prestigious examination. In a subsequent lecture, I'll be discussing with you some more test taking techniques which have proved to be beneficial to my students in the past. Some more model papers will also be posted. If you wish, you can subscribe to my channel so that you do not miss any new model paper or important guidelines which may help you to score extra marks in your board examinations. Or you may just search for any new posting from me. You can write me your queries or even a question which you want me to solve and explain with the requisite number of steps needed. I will be pleased to help. 
All the best. See you soon. Thanks.